Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another monthly reading wrap-up for June. I don't think I've done an intro. Uh, I have three books to talk to you about, so let's get started. Dane reads. The first is Murder in the Dark by Margaret Atwood, and this is sort of short fiction and prose poetry. It's actually really hauntingly beautiful and very well written. It's kind of hard to tell you what it's about, but as you can see from my tabs, I tabbed out a lot that I want to talk about in my review of this. Um, it's just... It's a very strange book and it's really well done and I gave it a 4 out of 5. I think if you're interested in, 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 in that, 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 if you're interested in Atwood, this actually isn't a bad place to start because you'll just get a feel for how poetic her writing can be. So yeah. Then I read An Apology for Idlers by Robert Louis Stevenson. This actually has some other stuff so it also has Letter to a Young Gentleman who proposes to embrace the career of art which is really fascinating. I'm Falling in Love, Crabbed Age and Youth on the enjoyment of unpleasant places. And then we have some travel writing, so Fontainebleau, village communities of painters, the old Pacific capital, and forest notes, idle hours. Um, I probably would have cut it before we got to the Fontainebleau to be, be, uh, bit, to be honest, um, but I guess that would have been too short. Um, but I did really enjoy it. It's one of the uh, Penguin Great Ideas books. I gave it a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5. And I found the Apology for Idlers, which is all about why actually sometimes we should be lazy. And also the letter to the young gentleman who proposes to embrace the career of art, which is just career advice for any creative person. Both of those were fantastic and particular standouts for me. So 3.5 out of 5. And then I read... On the Shortness of Life by Seneca. So Seneca is a Stoic philosopher, and this is basically about how life's too short and how we all waste it. So, I mean, I'm kind of wasting it now by shooting a YouTube video, you know, but he just talked about how we often, like, we, we wish our lives away, we, we're looking forward to the future. Um, he has, like, a particular contempt for people who basically live for the evening so they can go out drinking. And, again, bear in mind, this is about 2,000 years old. It's just really still relevant to us now. And as for myself, I mean, I suffer from death anxiety, so I think it kind of really did resonate with me there. And he does say life is long if you know how to use it. And he kind of shares his tips for that as well. So really well written. I mean, we do have a lot of like really long paragraphs with fairly dense print. But there's just a lot of great stuff in here. You can see from all the, the tabs that I've put here. I have a lot that I want to talk, to talk about to you guys. I gave it a strong 4 out of 5 and would recommend it. Check it out. Alright, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Boys from Brazil, uh, the Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin. Uh, I really enjoyed this. This is a kind of a thriller, political espionage, Nazis in South America kind of thing. Um, Dr. Joseph Mengele, who is the angel of death at Auschwitz, who did all of the horrible experimentation on twins and stuff. He's still alive. He's living in South America. An aging Nazi hunter tries to track him down and this, this novel basically follows the results of that bunch of tabs in this one so i will be doing a review god knows when it'll be out because i have a huge backlog of reviews to edit but i enjoyed it and i gave it a pretty solid four out of five and uh, ira levin is rapidly becoming one of my new favorite authors hello everybody just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is the maltese falcon by dashi or hammett so this is kind of an iconic crime novel uh, like hard-boiled detective uh, features sam spade and it's the reason for a lot of the tropes that you see in like detective fiction unfortunately i didn't particularly enjoy it i thought it was just okay um, it's the second Hammett I've read now. The other one actually was called The Dane Curse as well. But yeah, it's just been okay. Um, not really my thing. I think it kind of, it tries to be both an action and a mystery and ends up being neither of them, um, which is a shame. But um, I do like appreciate how influential this book has been. And um, I'm going to watch the movie of it as well, see if that's any better. Um, so the way I kind of see it is that this book influenced books that then influenced me, you know. But overall, The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, it was a 3.5 out of 5. It was a all right, one book to wrap up for you today, and that is My Sister the Serial Killer by Ayinkam Braithwaite. So this is obviously one I've heard a lot about on uh, Booktube, and I got it pretty cheap in the charity shop, so I was happy with that. It is definitely overhyped, I think. Um, it was good. It wasn't great, um, but I did enjoy it. It's kind of a middle-grade thriller, serial killer style thing. Uh, I think it might be a bit too much for like younger readers, and then for people like me who are just used to reading horror and gore and all of this stuff. It's kind of tame. Um, at times it actually made me laugh and I'm not sure whether she was trying to be funny at the times that I laughed at um, But yeah, like bits when it was talking about how bleach for example is only only good for getting rid of the smell um, Stuff like that it made me chuckle. But yeah, my sister the serial killer by income Braithwaite. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 
All right, so next up I read Harry Potter à l'école des sorcières by J.K. Rowling. Um, this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone to our American friends. Uh, the French edition. So I read this while I was away in Paris. Obviously it's about 300 odd pages. Um, it helped that I had read the story a bunch of times before and I knew what was happening so even when I couldn't you know follow the dialogue and the the vocabulary I could still follow the story overall it was also interesting because a lot of the characters have different names so Hogwarts becomes Poodlar, uh, Snape is Rogue and my favorite is the sorting hat became Le Chapeau Magique um, and so Chapeau is hat and Schwa is choice so it becomes the Chapeau the choosing hat. It's a really cool like little portmanteau that I did enjoy. Uh, overall, I gave this probably like a four out of five. Um, did enjoy reading it, you know, expanding my dialogue. I learned that uh, Balai is a uh, broomstick, for example. And uh, yeah, just some good stuff. You know, it's, it's Harry Potter. Actually reading it in French wasn't that dissimilar to reading it in English. It just took me three times, four times longer to, to read it. But uh, I'm glad I soldiered on. And it's the first time I've read like a full length book in French as my main book as well. So that was quite cool. Normally I'd read like a little bit of it each evening and I'd read a book like this over the course of like a month. So it was cool to just have this over a couple of days. All right, next up I read Navigators of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is book three of the Schools of June trilogy. I did tap it out to do a review, although as you can see, I haven't got a huge amount I want to talk about. It's not that this wasn't good, it's just that there was a lot of action to this, so it kind of, um, I don't know, it had like less philosophical stuff, it was more just things happening, things happening, things happening, which makes sense because it was the last book of the trilogy and they had to sort of tie everything all together and whatnot. Um, but it just made it for a slightly different kind of read. I did think it was a satisfying end to this little trilogy though, and to the Dune books in general. So the only thing that's left for me now is uh, The Road to Dune, which is by Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson, and the OG Frank Herbert, um, which has some like letters, some unpublished bits that didn't make it into the final original Dune books, and a few short stories as well. So I'm looking forward to reading those. But overall, I did enjoy reading Navigators of Dune. It was a four out of five for me. <laughs> And um, don't believe the hype and don't listen to the people who say that the um, sort of expanded Dune series isn't any good because apparently they do not know what they're talking about. And then I read A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. So this is basically a thriller novel, but it's really cleverly done. It does some really cool stuff with different perspectives. We sort of start out by watching the killer and then later on we watch people go and investigate the killer, but we don't actually know who the killer is. So we know somebody did these awful things, but we don't know who. Um, again, it's just a really good thriller novel. I can see how um, Levin's influence has kind of carried over to Stephen King, who did something similar. He, he's written both thriller and just sort of flat out horror. And um, it's kind of the grandfather of all of like the contemporary thrillers we see today, except much, much better. I gave this a very solid 4.5 out of 5. I didn't tab it out. Um, I was too busy just enjoying reading it, so there won't be a full review of this. But yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Um, the best one of Levin's so far has been Rosemary's Baby, then this, then The Stepford Wives, at least in my opinion. All right, so I finished reading the audiobook of Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. I gave this a pretty strong four out of five. I do think I enjoyed Something Happened more, but only because Something Happened was set in an office block, and, uh, well, in an office, essentially, and, um, you know, I've worked in offices, so I had a bit more in common with that, whereas this is um, sort of at the end of the Second World War, and, and I've never been in the military, although I do find the wars fascinating. I thought it did a really good job of kind of capturing the ridiculousness of a lot of stuff that the army does as well. Cat's on the table next to you, shaking himself, so if the camera wobbles, that's why. Um, I love the name Lieutenant Scheisskopf as well, cracking name. And um, yeah, I definitely think I would read this one again. So um, yeah, would, would recommend. It's definitely worth getting to if you can. I read Five Patients by Michael Crichton. So this is non-fiction. Um, and basically Crichton, he actually, as well as writing Jurassic Park, he created ER, the TV series, and he used to work in an emergency room. And this is basically the real stories of five patients that he treated, and he uses that to investigate things like what he sees as the future of healthcare. Now this was written in the late 60s, so obviously it's kind of dated, but also a lot of the things that he talks about are still just about happening today, like telemedicine. Um, so in this there was a there was an airport and basically it would have been a waste of a time for a doctor to be there all the time because they didn't have enough patients. But also during rush hour, it took like an hour to get there. So they had a video link with the hospital a few miles down the road and he would just sort of talk to people over, over that. And obviously this was in the 60s and these days it's increasingly common because of, you know, 
home working and all of that stuff. So it's just really fascinating to see that. Um, and overall, I thought it was a very well written book, a four out of five. Um, particularly fascinating to me because I've worked with a client on a book on the subject of the future of healthcare. Then I read Hurting Distance by Sophie Hanna. So this is pretty much a generic thriller. What I will say about this is this is very trigger warning-y, especially for rape and sexual assault. It's not one of those books with a high death count, but it does have a high rape count, so just bear that in mind. Um, it's quite tough to read a lot of times as well, but it was also pretty interesting. I mean, it's a fairly generic sort of crime thriller. Part of her series as well, so the characterization was good because she's written about all these characters quite a lot by this point. Overall, I gave like a 3.5 out of 5, and uh, yeah, it was all right. Oh, got, a, got a WhatsApp. Da -da -da -da. All right, next up we have Fool's Paradise by Zoe Brooks. So this is a poetry collection, but it's kind of presented like the poetry is almost uh, written as a play and it's very much designed to be performed. In fact, I'd love it to, to see it performed. Um, it's also reasonably old, like it's older work from the poet, but it, it really holds up really well. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. I've read Zoe Brooks before, but this is definitely my favourite of her collections. And my chair's squeaking at me. Okie dokie, then we have The Cowardly Line of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So this is the third of the Wizard of Oz continuations that she's done so she took over from L. Frank Baum and this is the first point at which it feels like she's really gotten into a stride um, it just read like L. Frank Baum, so that was pretty good, a nice little surprise. So I'm reading this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman, although we've both totally fallen off our schedule. He'll eventually catch up at some point. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5, and I'm looking forward to continuing the Oz series. All right, then we have A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. I'm not sure if I've reviewed this one or not, so I'll have to check. But this is basically travel writing about him walking along the Appalachian Trail. He never actually did the full thing, but he, he gave it a good go. And uh, yeah, he went along with his mate Katz. Just really interesting travel writing, lots of humour there as well. And I particularly enjoyed it because one of my friends slash colleagues lives in Appalachia, so it was good to see her neck of the world, woods, as it were. And uh, yeah, I gave this a 4 out of 5. And then we have The Road to June by Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is a weird one because it's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. So it's got like letters that Frank Herbert wrote about the original June series. It has uh, Spice Planet, which is like an early draft of the first June book, to the point at which it's recognisable, but also it's like having a fever dream. All the names are different different, a lot of the concepts are different, all of that stuff, but very cool and definitely worth reading if you're a Dune fan. Um, and then it also has some short stories, so it's got A Whisper of Caladan Seas, which takes place um, during the attack on uh, Arrakis City, or whatever it's called, in the first Dune book. And then it has Hunting Harkonnens, Whipping Mech, and The Faces of a Martyr, which are shorts that take place between some of Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's later sort of prequel books. I did enjoy it, I gave it 3.5 out of 5, it's not as good as the other entries in the series, and it does feel like what it is, which is just like a random collection of whatever they had going, but um, it was still worth reading. And now I only have Dreamer of June, really, which is uh, Brian's biography of Frank, so even then it's not really part of the June series, but I will get to that soon, and then I, th I think it's official. I I've done June. And then I read Last Chance to See by Douglas Adams and Mark Carwardine. So this is non-fiction. Basically Douglas Adams, the guy behind Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, he was invited to go and see some like rare animals in their native habitat essentially. So uh, he went along for this commission and he enjoyed the experience so much that he decided to go and track down some more and turn it into a book and this is that book. So it's very humorous um, but it's also travel writing as much as it is nature writing. Um, I gave it a solid 4 out of 5. My friend Stephen Cole who's a writer friend, he has a first edition of this that's signed by both of the authors, um, which I'm quite jealous of, um, and he said it's the best travel book there is. I don't know if it's the best, but it is definitely up there, so did enjoy. And then I read More Goon Cartoons by Spike Milligan, illustrated by Pete Clark. So this is literally cartoon strips of Goon Show episodes that were written by Spike Milligan, and again have been turned into little comics. It was just a very quick read, I picked it up in a charity shop, it was fun to get to. And uh, yeah, like 3.5 out of 5, but it's another one ticked off because I'm slowly trying to read everything Spike Milligan ever did. So there we have it as well. That is it for this month. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I have a reminders for Dane. Yes.